residual analysis. The aim of residual analysis is to let us have some way of measuring more accurately if our data and our association between the two variables is in fact linear. So here I've got a lovely set of data that is very obviously non-linear. It's curved. If we get it into our graphics calculator and perform linear regression, that is, get the R value, get our least squares line, we will be doing the wrong thing because we're sitting here using linear regression on obviously nonlinear data. And residual analysis lets us know that, hang on, something's wrong here. So let's have a quick look at our scatter plot. There it is, it's beautiful. Let's get our line of best fit, making sure we store our y values. Okay, so our line of best fit will be y equals 28.68 minus or x minus 78.7. That will do. You need to be able to plot the line either on paper or on your graphics calculator. Obviously, you've got a couple of options. Always go for the y-intercept, which we'll have to place here because I didn't give it enough space. Sorry about the mess. Uh, that's 50. So y-intercept about there. And ideally, find another point. You can find the x-intercept of this line, or you can just substitute in any x value and find it. Also, and you'll need to know this later, you can get the table of values for this line by going second function table. Hope you can see that one. Second function table gives you the table of values for that line that's in y1. And you know when we did the y variables thing, we were storing that line in y1. So second function table gives you all the points that are on that line. So you can just choose another point. Let's go, what's a nice easy one based on the fact that I've gone up by 50s here? There we go. 8 should be bang on 150. So here's another point. I'll plot my line in pink. 8 should be on the line at 150. So you need two points to graph any line, the y-intercept and one other point. If I'd wanted to do that by hand, I would have said when x is 8, y will be 28.68 times 8 minus 78.7. And that would have worked out, when I typed that all in, at 150 or so-ish. I've rounded off there. So, plotting your line of best fit. And if we're feeling really fancy, you'll notice I did that in a different color because it's not actually a point of the data, it's a point on the line. If we're feeling a bit fancy, we'd label that. Now, I need to introduce you to the concept of residuals. Residuals are the vertical distance of each point away from the line measured in the scale on the y-axis. I better put my negative 50 in there. So by that I mean if you draw a line from the point vertically down or up until you hit the line of best fit 
this distance away from the line is called the residual. So basically, this point is where the line predicted y would be when x was 8. This point is where it actually was. The residuals are like the error, how far off our prediction was. Now, the reason that a least squares line is called that is that if we measure each of those residuals, square them and add them up, the line that we want has the lowest possible sum of those residuals. Basically, we're, say, we're saying we want to have the lowest possible distance in total away from the line of our points, because that means it's the line of best fit to our data. And because we square the residuals in the calculation, which we don't need to do at all, ever, it's too hard for us, we'll just stick to using our calculator, it's called the least squares line. So that's why it's called least squares. Now, you can do a lot with the residuals. We can measure them. Be very careful if you are measuring them. This residual is not 8. It's not even 0.8. We're measuring based on this scale here. One centimeter is 50 on this scale. This residual is going to be 0.8 of 50 because we've got 0.8 of a centimeter times 50. That residual is about 40. And it's minus 40 because it's down below the line. So you can measure your residuals, but you're measuring in the units of the y-axis. You could also be asked to calculate residuals. For example, the y-value when x equals 8 is 15. Calculate the residual. We just calculated the fact that the expected value would show the working here. We would show this working. I just already did it to try to cut down on time because I know this is long. The expected value is y equals 150.7. So our residual, if we want to calculate it, is expected, sorry, actual, yeah, actual minus expected or predicted. So that's 15 minus 150 sorry it wasn't 15 at all on this one it was 112 I was um way off. Let's go back and we'll say it's 112. I was reading a different question somewhere. My deepest apologies. It's a very long day today. Um, so 112 minus 150. The resi residual is negative 38, which is pretty close to the negative 40 that we got when we measured. So that's calculating a residual. Now, luckily, you don't have to do that over and over again. What goes... The aim of our residual plot now is to actually graph the residuals. So the reason you've got this table here is we're going to fill in the predicted y values, predicted y, and the residuals. And remember, the residual is the actual minus the predicted. So that's y take away y with a little predicted in um, subscript. 
you don't have to calculate each one of these by hand. Remember I said that second table gives you the table of values. So we can go to x equals 1. The line is predicting that x would be negative 50.05. When x is 2, the line is predicting negative 21.38. So you can fill these in. Now the line is predicting when x is 3, 7.3. So you can fill these in simply from your graphics calculator. You might need to calculate one to show you're working. But for a whole table from the graphics calculator. Two oh eight point oops zero six. Sorry about that. So just down here to get predicted y, you do your linear regression with your y variables, then it's second table which gives you your table of values for that line. So it's the table of values for my purple line of best fit there. Now the residuals is y minus y predicted. It's a good idea to be able to work this out by hand because the calculator method is a little bit tricky. So 5 minus, now this is negative, so it's negative 50.05, and that's a, a residual of 55.05, .05. and that's because the point I have is above the line by 55. When the points I have are below the line, I'll get a negative residual. So again here, 6 minus negative 21.38. 8 minus 7.3, we can probably work out 0 0.7 on our own. But as you see, it takes a little time and care to do y minus y predicted all the way along for this table. So that is your residuals. Now, if you want to find your residuals on the calculator, second and stat, where we've got list. Scroll down to the residuals, press enter. Then, I've got to remember this one, store, which is down here, S-T-O. And you say where you'd like it to store it, which is going to be in list 3, L3. Let me just get my store. And L3 is above the 3 there. So that's second function and L3 and enter second 3 gives you L3 and enter and then when you go into stat edit there are your residuals in L3 so you can get the residuals 
from your graphics calculator. Once you've got your residuals, what we make is a residual plot. I'm actually going to fold this so you can see my residuals at the same time. You graph the residuals against x. So this is not y, this is residual. Now, this is still x. And that will mean when x is 1, the residual is 55. So you're graphing the residuals minus 20 Oops, we're above the line again, 7.6 and 10 has 100. There we go. That is a residual plot. You can also get it on the graphics calculator by clearing your Y1, because you're about to do a stat plot, turning stat plots on, and setting your Y list as L3 because that's where your residuals are. Don't forget to turn it back again and then zoom 9. Oh, if I remembered it. Okay, we've got that in. Zoom 9. There is your beautiful residual plot. Now the whole purpose of doing this is to see if there is a pattern in your residuals. My residuals go above the line, curving down below the line, above the line. If we've got a pattern like that, above, below, above, or below, above, below, a beautiful curve, that says my data isn't linear, which, surprise, surprise, we knew it's not linear. If the residuals are scattered above and below the line, all over the place, then that means there's no pattern in how the line of best fit interacts with them. It probably is linear. So all that 17, 18 minutes to go, this data is probably not linear, thanks. But that is residual analysis.